Welcome to the Rome Revival. My name's Arminder and hey, we're at the end of the year. This is it. This is the end of 2023. And you might be asking, hey, why are you all dressed up? Well, and that's because this episode is a celebratory look at all things rum in 2023. And because mostly it's actually an award ceremony. So, you know, you gotta get dressed up for that. Now I'm gonna give out some awards to rums that I thought were excellent and worth some recognition. So I'm gonna start off with a couple of awards that are less so about how the rum tastes and more about two things that I really appreciate in a rum. And that's a good label and transparency into how that rum is made. I don't know, let's call these the technical awards for lack of a better term. Let's start off with the best label. Now I'm really big on a well-designed bottle and label and when you're in a bottle shop, you're looking at rums on the shelf, it's what's on the outside of those bottles that's really gonna grab your attention, at least at first. So, because of that, I wanna honor some of the best labels this year. So here are a couple of the runner-ups. First up, there's the new label redesign of Holmes Key's single origin and blends lineup. It's a simple and clean look and feel. And then, when you realize that these various vertical lines that are on the labels are actually abstracted sugar canes, I mean, at that point, how can you not love these labels? Next up is Transcontinental Rum Line High Seas. Now the combination of the black and gold is just striking and it grabs your attention. Then there's the Lemison and Velier Flag series releases. Again, I love how minimal the design is here and the whole concept of using the deconstruction of the flag of the country of origin is brilliant. So those are the runner ups. Now, the winner for best label of 2023, in my opinion, goes to Rum JM Terroir Volcanique. And the label features an illustration of the distillery and the pops of green from the foliage and the iconic red roof of the distillery really kind of grab your attention. The thing that might not be apparent on the camera, however, is that the label itself, like the paper, has this really nice texture to it. So I think the use of the green frosted glass really makes the white label pop. And then from its predominantly white label, the limited use of color further pops, as does the red gilding on the embossed logo of Rum JM. Next up is the award for excellence and transparency for a product that provided a level of visibility and detail into the production of the final rum. For me, I've always been a big fan of when a rum either on the label or on its website gives you tons of information on the source material used, on fermentation, distillation, aging. And I think it really kind of connects you to what you're drinking and it helps make sense of what you're tasting. So I wanted to make it a point to recognize and celebrate those efforts because I hope we see so much more of that in the future. Now, before I list the winner, I want to mention a runner up and that would be the new Mount Gay single estate release. Now the website on this ROM has so much information about Mount Gay's efforts to grow their own sugar cane and make their own molasses. The site provides so much detail on like how many acres were farmed, how much cane was harvested, how much molasses was produced, how it was fermented, and all other sorts of detail that are really surprising coming from such a large distillery. Even if you have no interest in buying the rum, you should honestly just check out the page just for the detail alone. Okay, so let's move on from one black box to another and give out the award for excellency and transparency for 2023. And that of course goes to Hamden Estate, the Eight Marks Collection. Now the amount of nerdy detail that comes on the sheet that comes in the box is amazing. It really kind of pulls back the curtains and tells us how each of the eight marks or unaged distillates are made in terms of fermentation and distillation. It gets into the breakdown of the esters found in each of the marks. And like, there's so much detail here about esters. Like, I don't even know how to pronounce any of the names of these esters, but there they are on this infographic. And that's only one part of it, honestly. Once you actually start tasting through the rums, you realize that you're experiencing Hamden Estate at its purest, right? No wood to get in the way, just pure fermentation and distillation. And that kind of in its own way is a kind of transparency. Now, I didn't know that I needed this in my life, but now that I have it, I absolutely love it. And I would love for other distilleries to do the exact same thing, to put out something like this. Now, I don't mean just like other Jamaican distilleries. I mean like all of them, all the rum distilleries out there. I don't care where you're from, release all of your marks, folks, and let us experience them unaged and tell us all of your secrets, please. Moving on, one of the things that I love about rum is that it's a global spirit made pretty much all over the world. So it becomes like a, a window into different regions and different cultures. And I love learning about the world through the lens of rum. And I love trying rums from all over. So in that spirit of discovery, 
The next award is the Region of the Year Award. This is to recognize and celebrate a country or region that really impressed or surprised me with the various releases that came from there throughout this year. So this year especially, I feel like we got rums from regions that we tend not to get a whole lot of rums from. So that includes Ecuador. We got two Ecuadorian rum releases this year. And then we also got two rums from India and we don't get a whole lot of Indian rum. So that was very cool. But the region that for me this year wins the award would have to be the island of Reunion. This year we got four releases from Reunion. That includes the two bottlings from Azotier, the 16 year old cane juice rum, which is the rum agricole, and then the 16 year old molasses based rum. And then we got two releases from Holmes Key of Savannah rums, both the Grand Rome and the rum agricole. You know, what was kind of fun was that all these kind of came out within the same week or two. So we suddenly went from having like no rums from Reunion to like four. Having sat with these four releases throughout the year, it really has been a really cool and amazing experience. You got to experience like this real diversity in flavor profiles and production processes. You know, you have the big, brash, bold Grand Arome from Savannah, and then you got the light, delicate, floral rum agricole from there. Then you got these two kind of elegant, refined sipping rums from Azotier. While they do kind of follow similar production processes, they have different source materials, cane juice and molasses. So it's really kind of fun to compare and contrast them. And it felt like I knew nothing about Reunion and its rums prior to these releases, but now I've become such a big fan and all I want to do is try so much more rums from there. If you're interested, I did a whole video on all four of these releases. You can check it out here for a deeper dive into the rum industry in Reunion, all the distilleries there, and also my tasting notes on these four rums. Now, before we move on to the awards for best rums of the year, since we're doing an award ceremony, we kind of need to have like an in memoriam section, right? So for this year, I need to acknowledge the real tragic, tragic loss of money that I've spent buying all of these rums. Yeah, I have spent way too much this year. My rum buying has gotten out of control since I started making videos. <sighs> yeah, um, rest in peace to my bank account. Alrighty, so this is the big one, the award for best rum of 2023. And this is the one that really kind of stood out above and beyond all the other rum releases that I got to try this year. Now, before I reveal the winner, I did want to mention two runner-ups that were very close to being selected as best rum of 2023. Think of these as my third and second favorite rums of the year. Just realize I haven't actually decided which one's like number three and which one's number two. I don't know, it's kind of a toss up. So in no particular order, let's start off with Alambique Serrano blend number two. This is a Mexican cane juice rum from Oaxaca. It's a blend of two wild fermented pot distilled rums. The first rum is unaged and the second is aged nine months in highly toasted new French oak. And I can only describe the taste of this as like caramel covered spicy green peppers. And the other runner up is the Isotier 16 year old rum agricole. It's made on the island of Reunion. This is a cane juice rum that's distilled on a calm still, and then aged in new French oak for up to 24 months. And then it's transferred to ex cognac and ex rum casks, all of which are French oak. Now all in total, it's aged 16 years. And this basically tastes like berries covered in salted caramel with a touch of like sherry-like nuttiness. It really feels like elegant and refined, or at least it makes me feel that way when I'm drinking it, so I'll take that. So those are the runner-ups. It's time to actually announce the winner of Best Rum of the Year, which also happens to be the best single cast release of the year, and it goes to Lemison and Villiers Flag Series Trinidad 2002 release. Now this is a molasses-based calm distilled rum from Trinidad Distillers Limited, the folks that make Angostura. So as the label tells you, it was distilled in 2002. It was aged 15 years in Trinidad, then an extra five years in Europe for a total of 20 years in an ex bourbon cask. So this has like this initial out of this world note of like electrified lychee with a hint of smoke, like a lychee that's slightly sweet, slightly floral, slightly acidic. Now initially you get those notes of lychee, but then you kind of move away from it and you start getting these notes of like old dried up mint where like the mint has gone kind of brittle and like the brightness of the minty flavor is kind of reduced and kind of in its place you're getting a little bit more of like the note of like an old leaf and it also has these subtle notes of like menthol and ash it's truly unique and i have not had a rum that quite tastes like this definitely not from angostura so if you've been unimpressed by the mainline angostura rums this is absolutely going to change your opinion of what Trinidad Distillers is capable of. Now, honestly, Fia told me at the beginning of the year that I'd have a rum from Trinidad 
as my favorite rum of the year. I absolutely would not have believed you, but here we are, rum of the year. Okay, so that actually wasn't the last award of the night. Here's the thing. It's pretty much impossible to find a bottle of the Flag Series Trinidad release since it was single cast release, like 240 bottles, and it was released like seven months ago or something like that. One of my biggest regrets of the year was not picking up a second bottle when I had the chance. So like, I kind of feel like it's a bit of a letdown for me to put this rum on the list when the viewers can't really buy it, you know? I just, I don't know, I feel weird about that. Even though I, for me, this is absolutely the best rum of the year. Obviously you should definitely check out the runner-ups, both the Azotier 16-year-old Rum Agricole and the Alambique Serrano Blend 2. They are phenomenal, but those are also both limited and on the pricier side. So all that to say that it prompted me to create another category. So this category is the best actually available, actually affordable rum for 2023. It goes to a rum that isn't a single cast release. It's affordable. You can buy it after watching this video. And the winner in this category is Rum JM Terroir Volcanique. Now this is a cane juice rum from Martinique, aged three years in heavily charred American oak casks. And it's bottled at 43% ABV. It has like this smoky, woody note. There's notes of like creme brulee fruit. And it has like this earthy nutmeg finish, which is amazing. Now I think this is a delicious aged cane juice rum that I think can convert people who don't like cane juice rum into cane juice drinkers. So I think that the emphasis on the barrel derived flavors makes this super approachable and familiar enough, but then the cane juice adds this really nice dynamic element and provides notes of fruit instead of like the traditional kind of green grassy notes. And yeah, it is 43% ABV, but I think it works really well both in cocktails and sipping it neat. Now this has become one of my favorite rums this year to use in an old fashioned. It's so good. Now it's priced around $40. You're not gonna find it at like your grocery stores or your mass market liquor stores, but I feel like it's fairly available at specialty bottle shops around the country. So if you've written off cane juice rums or if you're looking for an affordable daily sipper, honestly, look no further than Terroir Volcanique. Well, there you go. Those are some of the rums that I love this year. I'd love to know what was your rum of the year. And if there's a particular label that really stood out to you, let me know in the comments below. Lastly, I wanna thank you for watching, all of you. Well, maybe not you, you know what you did, you can, you can leave, but the rest of you, it kind of blows my mind that this many folks are bothering to watch my videos. Like, thank you to anyone and everyone who's watched or liked or subscribed or commented or shared any of my videos. That is super cool of you and it sincerely, sincerely means a lot. I truly, truly appreciate it. Catch you next time. Cheers. Where's my realm? I had it here. Oh, there it is. Cheers. Oh.